Rarity Collection 1 was probably the greatest single set we've ever had here in the TCG. Not only did it give us some of the most powerful in-demand cards reprints in low rarities, but it also gave us in higher rarities for those that like to be a little bit of a rarity whore. Prosp, Ash and Talents are just some of the cards that were in Rarity Collection 1, but it wasn't perfect. I mean, the Ira Sword Soul got a QCR and nobody really wanted that. But Rarity Collection 2 is diving onto our shelves in a matter of a few weeks, and we already have quite a lot of cards confirmed for it. Cards such as Magician Souls, Ghost Ogre and Snow Rabbit, Access Code Talker, Phantasme, all of the planets, Silent Magician, Silent Swordsman, Ghost Mourner, Phantasme, Pearly, My Friend, Pretty Memory, Solemn Judgment, Strike, Warning, Surveyus, Preparation of Rites, e -Telly, Book of Moon, Book of Eclipse, Gold Sarcophagus, Alt Arts of Rescue Cat, Appaloosa and Mascarena all already confirmed for Rarity Collection 2. But that's not everything we're going to get in this set. And today we're going to be talking about what cards I think are going to be in Rarity Collection 2, as well as what cards I want in Rarity Collection 2, and what cards are needed to be in Rarity Collection 2. But without further ado, we need to address the main thing. SP Little Knight... Wanted, Bonfire, these big meta powerhouses that haven't had a reprint yet are very unlikely to be in Rarity Collection 2. They still have to sell, like, the Megatins, so let's not go ahead and push those down, but let's talk about some cards that maybe were missed from Rarity Collection 1, or just didn't see the light of day until now. So the first card I'm going to talk about is Pot of Duality. Consistency is a massive thing in Yu-Gi-Oh! And in the last set we got Prosperity, Extrav and Desires. And realistically, Duality is the next best one and was missed from Rarity Collection 1. But like I said, consistency is key and it's not going to be the only draw card I include. Allure of Darkness, Upstart Goblin and of course Trading will also be featured in my prediction for Rarity Collection 2. Here is what I think. Duality, of course, like I said, was missed from Rarity Collection 1. Is still seeing play in current formats, but does also see play in a lot of older formats, like Edison. And, most importantly, the accessibility of high rarity versions of this card are pretty limited. Although Konami doesn't look at the secondary market and look at things like, oh, it's an ultimate rare in QCR, or at least that's what we like to believe, the highest rarity print of this card is ultimate rare and is a very, very old card, for its print. We haven't had a real high rarity print of Pot of Duality for a while. Same can be said about the other cards I've included. The hype behind the Lore of Darkness getting a Speed Duel Secret Rare alone should put it in this set, as well as it possibly seeing a lot more competitive play now with things like Thunder Dragon being unbanned. Upstart Goblin? Fantastic card. Again, ticks the boxes, was used in Goat, is used in Edison, and more importantly, is quite expensive for a super rare that's played at three of in a lot of older formats. So having a mass, mass accessibility to a card like this is definitely going to tick a lot of boxes, as well as it not really having that many high rarity prints. So QCRs of this card, big thumbs up. And the last one is Trading. Bit of a random one, but level 8s are still pretty good in the meta. Things like Horus are still playing this card in some degree, and will always see play from time to time. Level specific draw cards are a little bit niche. Things like Celestial Observatory and the weird level 10 one we got in a few sets ago haven't seen as much play or have as much history as a card like Trading. But I still think trading is a fantastic choice to put in this set, just to bulk it out a little bit. But it's important to know that there is only going to be about 80 cards in the set. Rarity Collection 1 only had 79, and we, like I said earlier, already have 25 plus confirmed cards. So we kind of have to limit what cards can be in here, especially because we want to include so many. But we're talking a lot about cards that have seen play in previous formats. What about cards that currently see play now that are due a reprint? So although they may not be due a reprint, cards that are seeing play right now, we can't help but talk about the Charmers. These are seeing a lot of play right now, especially Lion of the Hack and Heater, but it would be rude not to include the other three, as they will see play in the future, and have been prevalent in the format since they came out. We also had Nightmare Unicorn and Phoenix in Rarity Collection 1, but we were missing both Cerberus and Griffin in today's Nightmare Package. Though they don't see much play, I still think they will be in here. And then for cards that still see a lot of play right now, Muckracker, 
Link Spider, Relinquished Anima, and Underworld Goddess are all generic links that I see in play in a variety of decks and have done for many, many formats. For me, this is going to be our Link Bundle that we will get in Rarity Collection 2. I think there is a shout for some other things, maybe like Borrelo Dragon for Nostalgia. But we're going to talk about Nostalgic cards after. What about XYZ cards that are currently seen in today's format? Like Zeus. Zeus is probably the most important card in your extra deck. It's been played since its release and will more than likely be in Rarity Collection 2. That's probably one of the more hype cards. I know that this thing already has like quite a lot of prints. You will be surprised. This thing still fetches quite a high price. Even the common in the most recent sort of player structure deck thing is like Eight, nine pounds. So let's get this in every extra deck for people that are really, really budget. But it's definitely not going to be the only XYZ, although I don't feel there's going to be as many as we'd had in Rarity Collection 1. We are going to include a few, such as Bahamut Shark and Totally Awesome. These are cards that I think will be in Rarity Collection 2. They have been seen play in the last few formats, especially with things like Tier Elements, Marincess, which is getting new support, and of course, it's supposed to be the Year of the Water right after Year of the Fire. So why not include probably the two most important water cards that are XZs in Rarity Collection 2. As well as Abyss Dweller. Probably the best rank 4 we have. And probably the best rank 4 we'll have for a long while. This thing is usually your go-to rank 4 if you only put one or two in. And if it's not this, it's usually... Baguska, the last XYZ I think I will include in Rarity Collection 2, just to round off this little patch of XYZs. But we aren't finished, we've done links, we've done XYZs, we're going to move on to Fusions. And it's hard to talk about Fusions without talking about Super Polymerization. Probably the best generic Fusion card we have. Now I can sit here and name a lot of specific archetype Fusions. We could go like... Mirror Jade, we could go for the Chimera cards, but I kind of want to keep this as a generic set because that's what Rarity Collection 2 is, minus a few cards, which we will be including right now. A bit of a long shot, but the first fusion card I'm going to include is Blue Eyes Ultimate Dragon. This is Nostalgia Bait, and I think we could get a cool artwork that we haven't had or haven't seen for a long while for this card. Not to mention that shortly after this, we do have the Battles of Legends set, which is all around the new Blue Eyes card. And on top of having the iconic Blue Eyes Ultimate Dragon, we're going to have the Meta House that is Red Eyes Dark Dragoon. Some would argue it flopped here in the TCG, but this card did run rampant for a lot of the format, and probably was the main reason that Verti Anaconda was banned, other than the fact that Verti Anaconda was fantastic. On top of that, I think normal polymerization would be a fantastic inclusion to this set. Is still seeing play in things like Chimera and Branded with the Fright for Package. And the last card I'm going to include is probably the best super poly target that we didn't get in Rarity Collection 1, Garua. This would be a small fusion package. There'd be a variety of things that we could add. We could go down some more nostalgic routes like Dark Paladin, or we could go down some meta routes like Mirror Jade. But I think these five cards will be a perfect round off for the fusion part of Rarity Collection 2. Now, Synchros is the last of the extra deck mechanic we've not talked about, other than Pendulum, but who cares about Pendulum? Synchros are in a really weird spot right now because the recent hits to Baron and Savage has really scared a lot of people off Synchros. And outside of things like Jet Synchron and Plaguesborough Zombie, not many people are making tuners and are making Synchro monsters. There is a few decks like Centurion that like to climb and you could include some things like the Red Dragon Archfiend cards with the Structure deck recently-ish coming out. But I kept it really simple. Bestial Dispada and Cyframe Lord Omega are seeing play in Snake Eyes right now and are probably the best generic level 8 and level 10s that are seeing play. Other than Tenpai playing things like Black Rose and Moonlight Dragon and stuff like that, but most of the other cards and other nostalgia cards have seen things in the tins like Stardust and Black Rose. So I think we're going to keep it super small and super simple, round it to a nice 55 
and go ahead and include a lot of really strong generic cards. And those generic cards include Cosmic, Karma Cannon, Delta, Cross Out Designator, Dark Hole, Zombie World, Foolish Burial, The Goods, Happies, Feather Duster, Metaverse, Gamma Seal, Foolish Burial, Kashtira, Fenrir, as well as Kashtira Unicorn, Ryo, Regeki, Reaper, Reborn, Skill Drain, Dino Wrestler Panker Tops, Necro Valley, Mirror Force, Twin Twisters, Terraforming, and Ultimate Slayer. Seems like a random pile, but I have good reasoning for all of these. Most of these cards have seen play in the meta in the last year or so, and most of them are in need of a reprint or just fit a pattern for the set. Starting with Cosmic, Twister and Duster, we are lacking back row removal in this set, and it's probably going to be featured in these three cards. The one I would say is least likely is Harpy's Feather Duster, as it has had a recent OTS Ultimate Rare printing. Is also the reason I didn't include Chaos Angel when I talked about the Synchro cards. Ghost Reaper, and a card I didn't include in Spooky Dogwood, finish off the Ghost Girls, and I probably would expect both of them in here. Maybe instead of Ultimate Slayer, you can change that for Spooky Dogwood. I feel Ultimate Slayer will be in here, but being a Power of the Element card, I think it will be more than likely in the Megatins, as well as, of course, the Sprite cards that a lot of people are predicting. Femrir and Unicorn are seeing a lot of play right now, not just in cash, Snake Eyes cash and a, vari a variety of things are becoming more and more prevalent and the cash tier cards are on the rise as well as Race Off being in here, Fenrir and Unicorn could quite easily sneak its way in. Dino Wrestler Panker Tops has recently been unhit to two, more than likely will go to three in a future list and is a fantastic side deck card that I feel will be featured in here. Skill Drain is one of the only floodgates that are untouched, and in the last set we did get things like Summon Limit, so I feel like Skill Drain will be in this set as well. Crossout Designator is fantastic and seeing a lot of play at the minute. It's seen a lot of play in Cash Tira, and it's seen a lot of play in Snake Eyes at the beginning, and now we're seeing a little bit of play in Tempai. The thing still holds around 15 to 20 pounds a copy, so getting more of these on the market, making it super accessible, is never a bad thing. Thunder King Ryo is spiking up like hell right now for Edison and Tengu format, as well as Mirror Force not really having too many high rarity prints. These are good good reprints for older formats, uh, and Thunder King Ryo is also seeing a little bit of play, as well as Skill Drain, in a few uh, stally matches like Runic Stun and stuff like that. Foolish Burial, as well as Monster Reborn, Terraforming, all fit under the generic sort of staples that everyone's going to need at some point. Regeki and Darkhold also real fun under that. Metaverse, Necro Valley, and Zombie World might seem like weird shouts, but they have all seen a lot of play. Being able to access these floodgate type field spells has become a viable strategy for a variety of decks for the last few years. And then the last one is Karma Cannon, Foolish Burial of Goods, and I think that's every single card in this little pile we've talked about. Foolish Burial of Goods kind of just is a good card. There will be a lot of decks that will need spells in the grave, things like Striker like we mentioned earlier, and it's just good to have this card accessible to everyone as it future-proofs certain decks and archetypes that may come out in the future, as Karma Cannon as well as one of the best traps in the game right now. But that is it. Believe it or not, that pile actually takes us to 79, which is the same we had in Rarity Collection 1. And this is what the entire pile is going to look like. And it looks like a really strong pile. Now, is it as good as Rarity Collection 1? Is it better than Rarity Collection 1? Mm, that's completely dependent on your take on the meta and your take on the cards and... You know, if you play the cards, is it worth buying? 100%. Every card you see here has seen play in previous formats, and will see play in future formats. That is without a doubt. There is no question that at least 60% of the cards in this set will see play for a very long time until they eventually get um, power crept by other cards. And you will need access to the majority of these cards to play the game competitively. But with that being said, there was a lot of really, really random cards introduced in Rarity Collection 1. Things like Faris and Increase and the Iris Sword Soul that 
really coincide with this. Like for this set, we have all the random planets. We have the Silent Swordsman cards. We have like Ultimate Dragon included. So I, I feel that both of the sets have done really well at including all of the meta, all of the player base, all of the fans. And that is what makes this set fantastic it's what made rarity collection one fantastic and is what's going to make rarity collection two fantastic and you might have your own input and if you have your own input you should leave a comment down below of cards that you think maybe i have missed and while you're at it you should leave a like and subscribe to the channel we try to do weekly videos here to real coincide and really engage i really want to work hard on this channel it's just really hard with work and other things right now but i want to be inclusive and leaving those likes definitely motivates me to do more but if you have enjoyed the video please leave a like comment and subscribe it's been your boy screech guys peace